Now that things continue to decline into absolute anarchy, let's all take a step back and remember the good times. The ones that left us so long ago. 2015, where everything was still an absolute shit show, but at least we could distract ourselves with the internet, instead of being banned from everything because you said something CNN considers verboten. Back when things were simpler, and we could have fun. So if we're going full nostalgic this video, let's not waste the opportunity. I'm gonna find the most pulverized, rotten, stinking dead horse I can find. Something so well tread that just saying the title will make you groan in absolute disappointment. Cool Cat Saves the Kids. I know what you're thinking. Lolly, why are you talking about a movie everyone and their mother has shit-talked to death? Everyone knows the story behind Cool Cat and Derek Savage, who cares? And you have a good point. Everyone from Your Movie Sucks, I Hate Everything has talked about this movie pretty much into the dirt. All the jokes have been made, but I want us all to take a few minutes to remember that while everything is on fire, we still have stupid movies to enjoy. Also, I'm creatively bankrupt and I need money. Please, for the love of God, my painkiller addiction can't feed itself. So, Cool Cat Saves the Kids is a live-action adaptation to the manga written by Derek Savage, the author and creator of the character. Cool Cat is an obscure, really obscure, children's character that does all the things you'd expect from grade school storybooks. He cares about his friends, hates bullies, and supports the military-industrial complex. Now I'm all for teaching life lessons to children. They need guidance, and the entire concept of childhood revolves around learning who you are as a person and getting ready for the trials of being an adult. But, eh. Looks like it's all just harmless fluff you put in front of your kid to shut them up instead of actually teaching them real-life lessons. Like, for instance, how honesty is an admirable trait that could still hurt the ones you care about if you don't take their feelings into consideration. Or how you aren't immortal and the scary slime monster under your bed will come for you in the night. My childhood was fun. In all seriousness, this is clearly something Derek Savage is really passionate about. In fact, you could argue he cares a bit too much. Not even talking about the absolutely ridiculous copyright controversy he got into with this movie, when it pretty much blew up into a meme thanks to internet reviewers. All around, there's just some creepy, borderline obsessive implications with this character and some of the lines. Derek really loves Cool Cat. He might be in love with Cool Cat. Derek claims the idea of Cool Cat came from an imaginary friend he had as a child, which is perfectly harmless, but he seems to really want to bring this character to life. It's hard to explain, but you'll see when we get into the movie. Before we get started, I just want to say, pirating your fucking movie gave my computer malware, Derek. I demand financial compensation. Either send your banking information or a picture of your cock or I'm calling my lawyer. The movie starts with a news report about how the country is falling apart due to bullies overrunning society. It's gotten so bad that you have children screaming up at the skies for somebody to solve the problem. Bullies have been picking on children everywhere and it is tragic. There has to be a way to stop the bullies. Help! Help! Kids everywhere are being bullied! Who can conquer this monstrous challenge? Only one man. With nine lives. So Cool Cat stops all bullying, and it's like two minutes into the movie. Which already shows this dude's an absolute beast. Move aside, Avengers, we got a 30-something-year-old failed actor in a cat suit. He's probably being sexually harassed by a former male stripper that writes children books for a living. These people exist. So the movie starts with Cool Cat making a sign for his campaign to become school president. He calls his friend Maria over, and we realize he is not a teenager that simply cares for the youngsters around him, acting like an older brother figure for the kids in the neighborhood. He is, in fact, an elementary schooler with the build of a grown man. Hi, Cool Cat! It's a beautiful day! Hi, Maria! I love it when it's pretty outside! You have a mind of an eight-year-old in this absolute unit. One bad day, and he'll use his claws against those shitty bullies to rip their jugulars out. One of the only two anthropomorphic cat creatures in existence, and he's basically Lenny from Mice and Men. Just look at the rabbits, Cool Cat. So Maria comes over, and they go outside to make more signs. As they work, Butch, the local bully, decides to play a prank on them. Picking on someone, and look over there. If it's not Cool Cat Maria, they think they're so cool. Long a punk up. Maria's pity, eh? Soft textures, ugly. <laughs> this has potential to show a good side of Butch. He clearly likes Maria, but he doesn't know how to express his feelings. The fact that he calls her hair pretty instead of just saying she looks like a degenerate hippie stuck out to me. He decides being a teasing little shit to get her attention is the only way for her to notice him. Especially since Cool Cat says Butch doesn't have any friends. What's the matter with him? He's always bullying somebody, and he has no friends. That's not fun! 
He's clearly got some serious emotional problems. Maybe he's from a broken home. We know his father's in the picture, but what if his mother died? What if his dad just remarried and Butch can't process the sudden change in his life? Butch is acting out and being a rascal because it's the only way to gain control of his own life. He can't control his own emotions because he's just a dumb kid, and he's dealing with issues someone his age can't possibly process easily. Really, Butch is the MVP of this whole story. He's had a hard life. Hey, Butch, even if you don't have any friends, I'll be your friend. We will be your friends. Rock on, Butch. You're gonna make it someday. Why do they call you Cool Cat? They should call you Dumb Cat! Oh, you fat motherfucker! So yeah, Butch is just an asshole. In fact, he just seems like a manipulative psychopath, already committing vandalism and theft. Seems like every problem in this neighborhood comes back to Butch being a dick. Jesus, imagine this kid in college. Piggy cunt. You want my fat cock too? Oh, why don't you go find a wall socket and stick your tongue in it? That'll give you a charge. I'll stick my tongue up your pretty pussy. You fucking creep! I'm going to kill you. Hey, uh, word of advice, cool cat? Make sure you be this kid's friend. Just... It, it might be a good idea. Anyway, Butch continues to fuck with Cool Cat and Maria. He texts Maria's phone multiple times, and despite blatantly just sending mean messages to her over and over, she decides to keep opening the texts. Don't know why she keeps falling for this, not like she has a Patreon to beef up with victim points. He then decides to cut the bullshit and call them directly, which doesn't go the way he thinks. Why do they call you Cool Cat? They should call you Dumb Cat! Who is this? You heard me! You might look like a cat, but you stink like a dog! Okay, fuckface. First, take a big step back and literally FUCK YOUR OWN FACE! Now, I don't know what kind of pan-Pacific bullshit power play you're trying to pull here, but Asia Jack is my territory. So whatever you're thinking, you better think again, otherwise I'm gonna have to head down there, and I will rain down on a godly fucking firestorm upon you. You're gonna have to call the fucking United Nations and get a fucking binding resolution to keep me from fucking destroying you. I am talking scorched earth, motherfucker! I will massacre you! I will fuck you up! So after the grown man in a cat suit yells at the small child, Butch attempts to graffiti on Cool Cat's sign, which violates the NAP, thus causing the god of wind to blow the paint back in Butch's stupid fat face. Cool Cat and Maria decide this kid possibly losing his vision is something worth celebrating, and immediately after this, Butch recruits two other kids to wreak havoc on the neighborhood. See, this is all symbolic to the cycle of vengeance. Cool Cat and Butch refuse to make peace, thus leading to only more death and carnage. Even Maria is corrupted into thinking retaliation is the proper way to end conflicts. That's what he gets. My daddy caused that payback. The endless rivalry that consumes everything around it like a cyclone. Unironically, this movie's like a million times better than Last of Us 2. At least it's honest about the protagonist being mentally disabled. Cut to Cool Cat and Maria discovering Butch's evil plot. He's been spray painting the N-word on sandboxes across the neighborhood. And if nobody stops him, the local barbecues are gonna get super awkward when the Black family shows up. And I guess Butch also stole a plastic shovel from one of the sandboxes. At one of the sandboxes, they even took a toy shovel! Now we can't build sandcastle! Not really sure why he did it, but if he cornered him, I don't think he'd have an answer either. Butch is the mad dog of Los Angeles. You can't chain the demon. Cool Cat confronts Butch and his gang, who immediately runs off without the other two. You might say this is out of character. Butch is the annihilator himself. Why would he run? Well, the explanation is simple. The other two would simply hold Butch back, so the weak must be purged. In Butch's world, men would fight their own wars and die for their own beliefs. Anyone that blindly signs allegiance to a cause they don't truly believe in is not worthy of life. Such is the way of Butch. Anyway, Cool Cat gives a speech about how being bad is bad because your bad friends will abandon you because they are bad. Why do you want to paint the wall like that? It looks like Butch left you holding the can! Yeah, I guess so. You know, my parents have a saying, with friends like that... God damn it! Derek's boyfriend is wearing that fucking cat suit again! The bullies reveal that nobody loves them, so they tag sandboxes to get someone to notice them. Because nobody loves us! We tag in other people's things so that they know we were there. Nobody cares for us. That's why we do it. Even though it was Butch's idea, and he convinced them to tag sandboxes because he wanted to have fun. Let's go have fun. What are you talking about? Yeah, lay it out, man. What I'm talking about is having some fun. So where's this weird self-confidence thing coming from? Is Butch running some Project Mayhem-style brainwashing program? Are these boys victims of state-approved sissy hypnosis? What are the depths of this child's power? Cool Cat and Maria return home, happy that their wacky misadventure is finally put to rest. They get back to work on their signs, and Derek Savage himself comes out to greet them. Apparently, he's playing Cool Cat's father, and he tells the kids to come inside for lunch. We transition inside, and it turns out Derek Savage has in fact busted a nut inside of this... indescribable cat monster. Hello, this is 
the cat residence. On one hand, the man is clearly insane for thinking this thing is in any way sexually attractive, especially to the point of creating a family with it. On the other, Derek might be the one thing preventing cat monsters from conquering our world. Their children are as tall as grown men. If we go to war with these things, we're fucked. We have no clue how many of these things are out there. Cool Cat's mother could have been sent as a scout to see if her plan is worth conquering, but she pulled a Son Goku and started a family on Earth. Derek's penis saved mankind. Seriously, dude, you literally just gave the original Cool Cat costume lips, some eyelashes, and put it in a dress. You couldn't have paid some random porno actress to put on cat ears and pretend to be a housewife for a few scenes? You already had a porn star play a cop. Plus, you wouldn't be giving children nightmares, nor adults when they get the mental image of you fucking this thing. It looks great. Thanks for your help in the kitchen. Oh, God. Oh, you know I Stop love flirting. You all Stop time. it. Get over, give Stop me it, you hug. fucking weirdo. Ooh. So Cool Cat is on the computer when he starts getting emails from somebody trying to bully him. You have that. A fat nose? And you smell like a dirty dog? I'm getting bullied in my own house? Why is your email address common knowledge among bullies? Wait, why was your phone number common knowledge? Wouldn't be dealing with bullies if you didn't dox yourselves like fucking idiots. Now despite actually setting up a decent lesson about internet safety, with Cool Cat acknowledging that whatever he posts is gonna stay up there for a long time, and could lead to ramifications down the line, he still responds to the obvious bait message. You were nice! You would have more friends, and friends are cool. Now to click send. There. I hope this email puts you in a good mood. Wow, that was fast. Let's see if he wants to be friends now. And this leads to a death threat. I'm a bully and I'm gonna get you tomorrow? Oh no! Once again, this could actually lead to a good lesson. Have Cool Cat calm down and realize it's just words on the internet. If he simply stopped feeding the troll, he'll move on and look for a response somewhere else. Sure, there are exceptions. And sometimes trolling turns into just outright stalking and obsession instead of just being funny shitposting. If they're really unlucky, it's a sex weirdo trying to get their attention to groom them, since Cool Cat is supposed to represent the average kid. But that stuff they can learn when they're older, or when a male feminist moves into the neighborhood. The death threat gets to Cool Cat, who has trouble sleeping that night. Though with his eyes open like that, it's more likely he's got some PTSD issues he's not dealing with properly. Cool Cat has a dream and decides that the only solution to dealing with his bully is to stand up for himself, even though he says he can't beat the shit out of him. What should I do? <laughs> I know I get mad when someone bullies me, so perhaps I just punch him. But wait, you'll get in trouble if you hit someone, and that's not cool. Plus, this specific bully is on the internet and not real life, meaning there's no possible way for Cool Cat to find a way to stand up for himself that doesn't make him look like a complete jackass, thus making the situation worse. Also, why the fuck are you in a closet? My PTSD theory might be closer to reality than I thought. So Cool Cat wakes up the next morning back in his bed, excited for the day. Him and Derek take a drive to Hollywood just to show off that they live in Los Angeles. Reminder that this is 2015 California. Still bad, but much less pathetic than 2021 California. To return home to announce that Cool Cat is going to be in the Hollywood Parade. I've got something wonderful to tell you. When we were in Hollywood, someone asked me to be in the Hollywood Parade. What's, what's he talking about? I know, honey, but I was there and it's the real deal. The Hollywood Parade wants Cool Cat to be in the parade to bring happiness to the kids. Man, I miss parades. Everything's gone so wrong. Still, Cool Cat is excited to take part in a glorified masturbation session of elitist pedophiles. He wants to take a new car and write a new song, so they go inside to get started. They write some lyrics, rock out for a bit. This may be hard to hear, but all the bands you like are pretty queer. Like they really care about what people think, and so that's why they all lip sync. All the talking points and trendy pause words, it's dehumanizing, it's so absurd. Shut the fuck up, it means nothing to me. Your politics, your taste in music, your regurgitated takes on everything. The clothes you wear or the food you eat. Please shut the fuck up, it means nothing to me. Your politics, your taste in music, your regurgitated takes on everything. The clothes you
Derek shows off his Van Halen guitar. Hey, check it out. It's autographed by the Van Halen band, and it was autographed back in the 1980s. Wow! That is so awesome! Woohoo! That's nothing. My uncle got stabbed by the lead singer of ACDC in the parking lot of Zaxby's. You ain't got shit, Derek. There's a full music video of Cool Cat rapping in front of a green screen. Do as you wish with this. Yo, yo, yo! My name is Cool Cat and I'm the coolest cat there is. I love to play and have fun and I'm always on the run. The sun is shining and I'm feeling fine. So everybody listen to the words I'm saying. Two fucking songs in a row, Jesus. Cool Cat picks up his car for the parade. One might wonder if a small child should be driving a car on public roads. But well, that closet scene made it pretty clear Cool Cat is a mentally disturbed veteran that regressed into being a child in a cat suit to deal with the various war crimes he committed. Next, several minutes are all about Derek Savage getting his OC into a Hollywood parade. You might think this would just be a special feature on the DVD or on his YouTube channel, but no. Here it is in this commercially distributed movie. And this scene goes on for a while. Cool Cat shows off the cars, tons of footage of the parade itself, you even see Cool Cat dancing in front of a bunch of confused onlookers. It ends with Derek and Cool Cat talking about how great the parade went and they decide to go home. Ah, I'm getting really tired. I could use a nap. Oh, I tell you, I can understand it. You've done a great job. It's been a long day. Hey, why don't you nap in the car while I drive us home? How's that sound? <coughs> sound. <coughs> sound. <coughs> sound. <coughs> What did this accomplish? Nothing. Except show off that Derek Savage has accomplished more in life than you or I ever will. Kinda hurts, not gonna lie. The next scene is Cool Cat and his parents preparing for a barbecue with their neighbors. They go on about how Derek will drop off Cool Cat first, then come back for the mom. You might ask why they don't just all go together, but it makes sense that they limit their exposure to Cool Cat as much as possible. Yeah, come on, Daddy Derek! Let's go! <laughs> Derek just has to tough out one short car ride, then him and Mom Cat can be late to the party as they get baked and regret their life choices. One day they'll give Cool Cat a sandwich with some extra special spices to it. Then they can bury him in the backyard and finally get that divorce they've always wanted. They just need the courage. Anyway, the barbecue is an excuse for blatant celebrity cameos. Wow, Vivica. It's such a beautiful day. Oh, wow, it sure is, Eric. And where is Cool Cat? There he is! Vivica Fox and Eric Estrada. If you don't know who these people are, don't worry. All you need to know is that their careers are dead enough to be in this. Jokes aside, Vivica Fox was in a few good movies. She played one of the assassins in Kill Bill and one of the more memorable ones too. Eric Estrada is famous for playing one of the main cops in Chips, and he's done other movie roles. But beyond that, his career is pretty stagnant too. They clearly do not give a fuck about actually doing a good job here, and they probably only showed up as a favor for Derek. Hey. Hi! I could use him! <laughs> I'm not sure, Cool Cat. Perhaps Eric might have an idea. Ooh, I got a great suggestion. How would you like an ice cold glass of. Maria is also there, and I'm worried that her parents let this small child hang out on the celebrity's property, especially considering recent revelations of Hollywood culture and their attitude towards children. If they offer you a movie role, run for your life, Maria. It's not worth it. Butch shows up to the party and knocks down their sandcastle, then just pieces out as Cool Cat gets upset. The drunken actors and the young girl console the man dressed as a cat, and he learns to stand up to his bully. But I didn't know what to do! I got scared and became confused! Oh, it's okay, Cool Cat. People used to pick on me, and then I learned how to react. Would you both like to hear what Vivica did? I learned to empower myself. In other words, I quit being scared of the bully and I yelled at him to leave me alone. And I yelled very loudly. They yell at the fat child and he cowers to the pressure. Honestly, not the worst lesson, 
basic as fuck since this could easily lead to a fight if it happens in real life, but fuck it. This is for kids, and it at least teaches them stuff like telling an adult and standing up for yourself. Butch swears vengeance, and I guess it cuts to the next day. Cool Cat finds one of Derek's entertainment magazines, and sees an advertisement for a writing contest. The grand prize is $100, so Cool Cat decides to write a story for the porno mag and win the money. Cool Cat decides to write a story about a trout that makes a lot of friends, but he gets locked up on ideas. So he exercises. And I guess the sudden surge of creativity pushed Cool Cat past the brink of insanity, because he talks to Derek like a maniac about his masterpiece. This is my best story yet! And you know what? I think it's some of my best work! Well, hey, fantastic. Would you like to tell me about it now or later? Ooh, later, cuz I'm not finished with it yet. He draws the cover, which is a blatant JPEG they printed off, and goes to bed. Cool Cat's parents make breakfast while he gets ready for the morning. The sexual tension is thick in the air, and Cool Cat gets the fuck out as the most agonizing dishwashing scene in cinematic history plays. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Here's one. Let me help you right there. Oh. We call this teamwork, huh? Oh, I love teamwork. It's so much fun. Ooh, it's just... Seriously, just hire some no-name actress, because the cat costume turns this into a living nightmare. Cool Cat meets up with Maria and their friend Mikey, who shows up to show off his bouncy ball. The ball rolls across the street, and Mikey runs to grab it. I wonder if Mikey sees that car! I hope he does. Watch out, Mikey! There's a car! Nah, he's fine. Cool Cat teaches Mikey to look both ways before he crosses the street. Good lesson. Kids should learn this kind of stuff. Well, a radio broadcast announces that bad guys are stealing candy from babies, stealing school books, and yep, it's Butch. Cool Cat runs across the street to chase after him, his lessons to Mikey completely disregarded as he hunts down the fat child. Butch throws candy and the book to the ground in hopes of tripping Cool Cat, but it doesn't work. Fucking get your ass back here! So Butch instead runs out into the road and slams straight into a cop car. Oh, oh no, the cop! He's got a gun! Cool Cat and friends go inside to eat lunch just to hear a report on the radio that Butch was released because there was no evidence that he stole the candy. Because he ate it. Because he's fat. They go outside to play and see a gun on the ground just sitting there like a GTA pickup. Okay, this is California. Buying a gun is harder than finding a unicorn, and I'm supposed to believe that somebody would just leave a revolver in the yard like that? Maybe it's Derek's personal last resort gun for a bad day. Living with Cool Cat would push a man to such options. Piece of advice? Don't put the gun to your chin. Eat the gun. Aim for the medulla oblongata, since the round would hit your brain stem, turning off your nervous system immediately. In Minecraft. Now Cool Cat's advice here is actually really solid for children to learn. Don't fucking touch it! You don't know if it's loaded. Tell an adult and they'll handle it. But then Butch shows up and decides he'll take it to school. It's a gun over there! I can bring it to school and take everyone's lunch money! It's going to be that time for me! <laughs> Holy shit, this got dark. Move aside, Gus Van Zant. Derek Savage is the new king of school shooter movies. Now Derek's solution to this problem is make the kids go home alone while the kid with the gun is running around and we don't know where he is. But he calls Butch's parents in the hopes of getting them to take care of it. Look, James, this is serious. Cool Cat saw Butch take the gun and you need to speak with him about this. Even though I'm sure you're mistaken, I'll look into it, Derek. Hey, thanks, James. Take care. Okay, so this literally solved absolutely nothing. Derek takes the kids to school, and you see Butch and his friend playing with the gun outside of it. So despite clearly seeing this psychopath with a firearm close to the school, you decide to keep going to school. Okay kids, come on, let's get inside the school. They'll help us, they'll call the police. Instead of using your cell phone to call the police from a safe distance, hell, why isn't Derek carrying a gun on him? All he knows is that this kid who has a history of violence just brought a deadly weapon to a school. What were you planning on doing, Derek? Giving him a stern speech? Anyway, Butch and his minion get another visit from the police. No, it's the police! Please. We're in trouble! Oh, my mom is gonna whoop me! Shut, bonehead! He's got a gun! By the way, I wasn't kidding when I said this guy's a porn star. From there, Butch is finally defeated, Cool Cat becomes school president, wins the writing contest, and even gets a new friend after the other kid gets released from prison. All's well that ends well. 
If it's not clear, this movie is absolutely ridiculous. It looks like it was shot on a cheap camcorder, the audio work is awful, the script is atrocious, but it's so weird that it's fascinating. It's painful to watch, but you gotta keep going just to see what happens next, and the slightest tweak to any scene turns this into one of the greatest satires of children's edutainment that you could get. It's completely delusional. Derek is completely delusional. The guy loves what he does, but he's desperate to whore this character out into some kind of massive franchise. He really thinks he's made something on the same level as shit like The Magic School Bus or Bill Nye the Science Guy, but it's... Yeah. And honestly, Derek seems like he's kinda shady. He's done some things that, at best, were fucked up and morally wrong, and at worst could be seen as outright illegal. Not even talking about the copyright debacle. The dude thinks he's made perfection and needs to fight to his last breath to protect it. Granted, he's gotten over a lot of the negative reviews for his movie. In fact, it seems like he's trying to turn himself into the American equivalent to Tommy Wiseau, banking off the meme factor of the work and steadily losing the crowd as they get tired of the same joke over and over again. He announced crowd funded campaigns for shit like Cool Cat Stops a School Shooting and Cool Cat Fights the Coronavirus. He's desperate to stay relevant. Honestly, it's kinda sad. And I wouldn't recommend donating to his campaigns unless you are 100% certain you want to. As stated, he has done some shady things you might want to look into. Still, who knows? Maybe we're all the idiots in Disney will pick up Cool Cat for a movie franchise. Crazier things have happened. Until next time, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys. If you were nice, you would have more friends. And friends are cool. Now to click send. There. I hope this email puts you in a good mood. Wow, that was fast. Let's see if he wants to be friends now. What have I become? My sweetest friend Everyone I know Goes away in the end And you could have it all My empire of dirt I'd like to thank Al Chemical for providing his voice for this video. It was just a small cameo, but it was really nice of him. Go check him out. He's a voice actor, and he does all sorts of things like voicing webcomic dubs, and yeah, he's a funny dude. I like him a lot. Cool dude. I'd also like to thank my Subscribestar donators. Gabriel Lankford, Velkira, Al Chemical, Sorted Sentinel, Olgierd Rabenda, Jaegerbomb2, Kafka's Bug, Bridge Badger, Anthony Paletta, Zell, Hand Rubbing Merchant, Epistemological, Cream Pie Kohai, War Crime Enthusiast, Heat Signature, Quisp Heavy Sack Fratelli, Gabin Logan, Shrimp Cake, Matthew Thompson, Bottled Titty Milk, Joshua M. Howard, Bost, The False Knight, Moon Knot, Sir Atlich, Sexy Demon Horse, Angry Talkie, Crumb, AMD Blue, and Mr. Cool Gamer. Your appreciation is much appreciated, friends. Have a good one.